We're getting a divorce. I don't need a wife who abandons her husband. That's what Eldon spat at me after I gave birth at my parents' home. He shoved pre-filled divorce papers in my face. Up until then, Eldon hadn't shown any concern for me during my pregnancy. In fact, he quit his job for selfish reasons and is now unemployed. I finally lost all love for him. I don't need a husband like this, and it's bad for our child too. I coldly replied, Fine, I'll give you the divorce you want. I firmly decided to leave. My name is Gloriana Ambrosio, a 30-year-old average woman working as an office employee. I have a husband, Eldon, the same age as me. We got married when we were 26. We became close quickly because we worked in the same department. Eldon was a very kind person and took his job seriously. He confessed his feelings to me, and since he was someone I felt comfortable with, we got married after a year of dating. His father, Caden, is a responsible person who runs his own business. Eldon always said, My dad is strict and scary, but Caden has been kind to me. We never had big fights and our marital relationship was good. But then, a major incident happened eight months ago. I was called into the boss's office at work, wondering what it was about. The boss told me something unexpected. Actually, I've heard Eldon's work attitude is poor. Specifically, he doesn't meet deadlines and doesn't apologize for being late to client meetings. His boss is at a loss about what to do. Could you talk to him? Shortly after Eldon and I got married, we were separated into separate departments. I was shocked to discover that Eldon and I had been assigned to separate departments since our marriage. I had always believed Eldon was working diligently there. There had been no signs of any change at home, but I started to worry that he might be under stress. That evening, I asked Eldon about it. He promised me, no, I'm not getting along well with my boss. I'll talk to him and resolve it. I'll change my attitude. But a week later, he came home and said, I quit my job. I can't work under that boss anymore. I checked with his boss and it was true. Eldon's work attitude had worsened since joining this department. He didn't reflect on his actions and only made excuses. That led to an argument, and he quit. For the record, Eldon's boss was well-liked and respected in the company. It was natural to think the problem was with Eldon. Still, he seemed to regret quitting. I'm sorry for the trouble. I'll find another job soon, he said. I thought things would be okay, but that was wishful thinking. A month passed, and Eldon only complained. No company wants me without serious job hunting, he said. He graduated from a prestigious university and has work experience. There should be at least one company willing to hire him. When I asked what kind of company he wanted, he said, one without a nagging boss where I can make at least $5,000 a month. I attended a prestigious university. I should be discerning. My thought was, you're being way too picky. I just wanted him to work like a normal person. But Eldon continued to avoid work, becoming fully unemployed. I was puzzled by Eldon's change of character. But one day, I came home from work to hear Eldon talking on the phone. Since Gloriana is working, I don't have to, I'll just sweet talk her into supporting me. I never thought pretending to be serious would work this well. At that moment, I realized I'd fallen for a complete fraud. The real Eldon was just a slacker who had been playing the role of a nice guy. When he noticed me, he tried to brush it off, saying, I was joking, I'll look for a job. But I wasn't fooled, enough is enough, you better start working. I yelled, insisting you find a job, any job. Part of my anger came from concern for our future. But there was another, more pressing reason. I was pregnant. I found out I was expecting around the same time Eldon quit his job. Raising a child costs money, so I wanted Eldon to find stable employment. But as I mentioned, Eldon remained jobless and didn't care much for my pregnant condition. I was struggling with morning sickness and other issues, making household chores difficult. Yet Eldon lay on the sofa, eating potato chips, even saying, Pregnancy isn't an illness. Deal with it. I had hoped he'd change as he became more aware of his impending fatherhood, but his attitude remained the same. In fact, it worsened. Just yesterday, he got furious when I used canned food to save time on cooking. You should feed your husband proper meals. That's a wife's duty, he lectured. I was furious. We had a heated argument, and not once did he mention concern for our child. I'm seriously worried about our future together. Some might say, why not just divorce him? But if I do, our child will be born into a fatherless home. I'm emotionally unstable, especially with my first pregnancy and the due date is approaching. I've decided to put off any serious discussions until after the birth. Given Eldon's unreliability, I chose to give birth at my parents' home. They agreed it was the best option. 
But even then, Eldon complained, What am I supposed to do without you? Who's going to do the chores? I was so fed up with Eldon that I angrily told him, You're an adult, figure it out yourself, and went to my parents' home. I later gave birth to a healthy baby when I felt better. When I returned to Eldon's place after about two months, it was a mess. Trash was scattered everywhere, and a pile of clothes lay next to the washing machine. As I stood there stunned, Eldon appeared with bed hair. Finally, you're back. There's something I want to talk about, he said, pulling out a document with a malicious grin. It was a pre-filled divorce application. I'm divorcing you. I don't need a wife who abandons her husband. Hearing this, my love for Eldon completely evaporated. I thought, I don't need a husband like this, and he's a bad influence on our child. Coldly, I said, fine, you'll get your divorce, and was determined to leave him. Still, Eldon remained defiant. You'll regret it if you divorce me now. Fill in your part. I snatched the divorce papers from him and filled them out immediately. I decided to take them straight to the courthouse. Goodbye then, I'll come back for my stuff later. Don't throw anything away, I said as I left the house and went directly to the courthouse. The divorce was finalized and Eldon and I became strangers. I returned to my parents' home and decided to raise my child with them. I didn't want to stay in a house filled with bad memories and raising a child alone was daunting. My parents are trustworthy and it's comforting to have them around. Life became a daily joy watching my child grow while navigating the challenges of new motherhood. However, a month after the divorce, Eldon suddenly called my parents' landline. I had blocked his number on my cell, but I'd forgotten to block the landline. Hey, when are you coming back? I'm struggling here, he said. Confused, I retorted, what? We're strangers now. I'm never coming back. Hearing this, Eldon started to panic. Wait, you actually filed the divorce papers? He asked. Yes, you wanted a divorce, didn't you? I've been over you for a while now, so I submitted them a month ago, I replied bluntly. Upon hearing my response, Eldon became furious. Why did you file them? I was just trying to scare you into coming back and taking care of me, he admitted. I was utterly disgusted by his twisted logic. Whether you were serious or not, I have no intention of reconciling with you. You've been useless ever since I got pregnant. Who would want to be a family with a man like that? I stated firmly. Realizing his mistake, Eldon finally said, I get it. I'm sorry. I've reflected on my actions. Please come back, I'm really struggling financially, he pleaded. He was pretending to be remorseful now. We settled our property when we divorced, and like I said before, you're an adult. Figure it out. I yelled and hung up the phone. I immediately blocked his number to prevent further calls. I thought that was the end, but a month later, on a peaceful Sunday afternoon, the doorbell rang. It was Alden. Not wanting anything more to do with him, my parents and I tried to pretend we weren't home. But Alden persistently banged on the front door. Hey, I know you're in there. Come out. Reluctantly, I went to answer the door. There stood Eldon, skitty and unshaven. I hadn't seen him in two months, and I was shocked to see he looked like a drifter. Without asking, he walked into the house and sat arrogantly on the sofa. Gloriana, I need money. Just one thousand dollars. I'm really struggling here, he pleaded. So why don't you get a job? You have a degree from a prestigious university, and you're not too old to work, I retorted, annoyed. Alden began to explain, actually, I've decided to make money through investment. Working a regular job is for fools. I found a trustworthy advisor online, so I'm good. I'm still in the red because I had just started, but I was told it would turn profitable. However, I'm running out of the money I got from our property division, so I need your help. I was sure it was a scam. My mom, looking disgusted, returned to taking care of the baby. My dad also looked like he thought it was a scam, but Alden, oblivious, kept insisting on money. I'll pay you back when my investments pay off, and you can live the high life, he said. I reached my breaking point with his incessant and nonsensical demands. If you don't stop, I'm calling the police, I warned, genuinely angry. With my dad, we kicked Alden out. The mention of the police kept him away for a while, but we never knew when he might show up again. We considered moving, but with a baby, it seemed ridiculous to incur moving costs just because of him. So my parents and I devised a plan for the next time Eldon showed up. Another month passed and unfortunately, Eldon returned. Seeing him, my mom immediately made a phone call as planned and my dad and I let Eldon in and humored him for a while. His goal was still money. I'm in trouble. I can't reach my investment advisor anymore. I poured in over $10,000 and it was a scam. I have nothing left, 
You're the only one I can rely on. It was incomprehensible why he thought he could rely on me after all he had done. But we couldn't just send him away. He might come back. So my dad and I listened to Eldon's complaints to buy time. We were waiting for reinforcements. When Eldon paused, I smiled reassuringly. Don't worry, I'll help you find a new job and a place to live. Eldon's face lit up. Really? Yes, really. Just then, the doorbell rang. I checked and let the visitor in. It was the person my mom had called. Seeing the man's face, Eldon froze. Dad? My mom had called Eldon's father, Caden. Actually, my parents and I had been consulting with Caden about our Eldon problem. After hearing the whole story, Caden said, I apologize for the trouble my foolish son has caused you. If he bothers you again, please contact me. I'll come to pick him up immediately. So we decided to call Caden the next time Eldon showed up. Eldon was intimidated by his father, so we hoped this would have some effect. And it did. Eldon was furious. Why did you consult my dad? This is a family issue. I'm not a child. I don't need to rely on my parents, but his face was pale. Caden, on the other hand, seemed to explode with anger at Eldon's words. What kind of attitude is that? After causing so much trouble, you've done something so terrible that even your parents have to intervene. What are you doing at 30? Eldon was silenced and was taken away by Caden. After that, Eldon started working as a general helper at Caden's company. He's being strictly trained in manners and how to be a decent human being. Moreover, his direct boss is quite strict, and if Eldon slacks off even a bit, he gets scolded. Life must be hellish for Eldon, and his salary is lower than when he was a regular employee. With debts to pay, he's not left with much. It's a far cry from his dream of making $5,000 a month without a nagging boss. And it must be tough but he brought this upon himself, so I want him to suffer. As for me, I'm busy raising my child. My child is growing up healthy and strong. Life is tough, but my parents are supportive, and there are many experienced parents at my workplace, which is a big help. Recently, I went to the aquarium with my child and parents. My child was fascinated by the dolphins he saw for the first time and seemed to enjoy it. I want to give my child various experiences and want him to learn many things. I intend to do my best as a parent.